He has put this whole thing together tonight. He is a wonder, 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 wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guy. We've worked together several times. He's a good, good friend. He's been at the Reading Comedy Outlet. He's a regular hair host here at the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. Please make a warm welcome for a good, good friend, Ryan Caldwell, everyone. Ryan Caldwell. How's everybody doing tonight? Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Cheers to all the drunk people here. This is Pepsi. Calm down. Yeah. A little bit too much liquor in there. Hmm? Oh, man. My entire family's here. How embarrassing is that? I'm 27 years old. I could get grounded tonight. My mom and dad were tough growing up. Anybody else have tough parents growing up? I'm not talking about the kind that would like take you in and put you on timeout. I'm not talking about that. My parents used a belt. <laughs> Old school. I had six brothers and sisters when I grew up. I had. <laughs> I had six brothers. I got one of each then. <laughs> They're like, oh, you think you're funny? I'll take you out in the backyard and shoot you. <laughs> they literally rewrote Old Yeller. <laughs> no joke. That's tough parenting right there. Life lessons learned at its finest. Yeah, we have a brother or a sister growing up who's just a dick. <laughs> yeah. a round of applause for the people that did. <laughs> My older brother Mark always got me in trouble, and it was always like the tattletale contest, you know, because I was younger, so I just rat him out for everything. I couldn't beat him up, so death it, I'll just tell on you. <laughs> Let mom deal with it. One time I was outside though, and we were like, I was like 10 years old, and I remember I swore, I said, damn it. And my brother was like, I'm gonna tell mom. I was like, Mark, don't tell mom, please, seriously, I'll work out anything with you, right? I traded him Joe Montana cards, his rookie card. Yeah, I know, that was the sound of my head, deflation right there. I know what the deal was, it sucked. So we were like all sitting around the dinner table that night. My brother was like, hey mom, guess what Ryan said outside? I was like, Mark, Mark! Ah! Joe Montana cards, hey, worked out a deal. <laughs> Kept doing it all dinner. Mom, guess what Ryan said? Arr! Arr! <laughs> like midway through the dinner, my mom gets up, right? I slid a napkin on the table, I was like, shut up. I will give you Jerry Rice cards on top of everything if you just shut up. He agrees to it. No sooner does he agree to it. Hey mom, guess what Ryan said? I was like, damn it, Mark! Reverse psychology, my friends. That's what older brothers are all about. They get you. Anybody have a big family? Come from a big family? My manager, Susan, she's got like 15 cousins. They're all from one marriage. <laughs> that is a Catholic family right there. No, I was saying that I, I came from a big family, and uh, I don't know, I always hated holidays when you get together with your family, because everybody just sits around the table and lies to each other, and <laughs> acts like you like the other person, or talk about politics at the end, you just want to kick everybody in the nuts. It's pretty much a Thanksgiving that's coming up for us. My brother would tell me about how I wasn't supposed to vote for Obama. I'll tell him I hate him. We'll go home happy. That'll be the end of it. We have an alcoholic uncle. Crashes all the holidays. Hate it. Anybody have like the the habitual line crosser in the family that just ruins everything? Yeah. And he always gave the worst gifts too. Like you have somebody in the family, like your grandmother and aunt, that just gave you habitual bad gifts year after year for your birthday. Like the one year he gave me gonorrhea. <laughs> Sucked. Well, you, you just can't play with it all the time. It goes away. You know when it's coming back. So speaking of holidays, Halloween's coming up. You guys excited for Halloween? Yeah. I love Halloween. Halloween's seriously my favorite holiday. But the only thing I don't understand about Halloween is why is it uh, okay, perfectly okay, on Halloween night you can ask all the kids in your neighborhood if they want candy. That's fine. <laughs> Very next day, you park 100 feet down from elementary school in an unmarked van. 
Apparently that's a crime. That's stereotyping, my friends. Okay, a couple of looks I got from this table are a couple of looks I got from my jury, so... I'm starting to understand that conviction. <laughs> they hate to see you two years in a row. <laughs> my wife and I, we got invited to a couple Halloween parties this year, and uh, we're always trying to go as a duo. Uh, sorry, people from Prairie County, that's two. <laughs> And we're always trying to come up with, you know, the duo outfit. You know, she's always got a dress on that. I got to match it or whatever. I was like, screw that this year. I've sat around for months and I've thought about my outfit. And I think it's awesome. I'll get you guys' opinion. Uh, I'm going to single. Because <laughs> the whole night I can hit on women and she can come over and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's part of the costume. God, why does everything always got to be about you? Ruining everything. I'm so happy to have a good crowd here. A couple weeks ago, I was down here. I'm seeing it, and they had a lock and key event down here. Anybody know what that is? Round of applause. Right, lock and key event. Awesome. You guys all met naturally. Uh, a lock and key event is where you pay to come to the bar, and you just order a bunch of drinks, and hopefully you get the other girl drunk enough to take her home. Woo and uh, that's lock and key event. I call it speed dating. The guy in the back of the room did not like to have it called speed dating. And in the middle of it, he stood up, and I, I was like, so why do you guys even call it lock and key? And speed dating, he stands up, he's like, because it's not speed dating, asshole! <laughs> okay, relax. A, it's just a joke. And B, you're from Perry County, so that's a joke in itself. <laughs> so afterwards, he comes up to me, he starts talking to me after the show, and he got really pissed off at me, like he wanted to fight me. I was like, dude, I'm 27 years old, I'm not going to fight you. Any guy in here actually want to fight? That's what I'm talking about. Nobody wants to fight when you're growing up. Maybe in high school when you had to actually prove something. I was like, dude, I got running sneakers on, I'm running. I'm a grown-ass man, I am not messing this up any worse than what it is. My wife already knows I'm a pussy, I don't have anything to prove. <laughs> And then him and I just made out in the parking lot. <laughs> it's good makeup. I think I did figure out the point when I was completely domesticated as a male, as a married male, uh, when about mm, two months ago I found myself in the customer service line at Giant arguing why they wouldn't take my triple coupons. <laughs> I was like, it says nothing here about nothing from the meat department. It says right there. Okay. <laughs> Fine print, my friend. Good. Nope, no need for my name. Put it up with your manager later. My wife has been married for two years. Two years too long. Aww. Now she laughs about it. It's funny. It's funny. People are always asking you, though, like after you're recently married, like, oh, what's it like to be married? You're like, oh, it's just like dating. Only worse. Before in your dating, she might get a little bit of your money. Now that you're married, she gets it all. <laughs> you don't have a choice in the matter. It's like as soon as you put the engagement ring on that finger, it's like, let's get a joint bank account. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you suddenly find yourself standing in lines at giant Walmart asking if you can buy something. Monday night, we came out, we had nothing in the freezer or in the refrigerator. We went out to Giant, buy some groceries. We're in the freezer section. I came, this is the most <laughs> awesomest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. An entire cheesecake and each slice was different. <laughs> I was like. Hey, can we get this? It's like $9, but I don't care. I won't eat out this week if you let me get it. You always have to barter, too. I promise I won't go anywhere. I'll just drive to work and back. I won't waste any gas. I'll use less phone minutes this month. Please, just let me get it. 
Then for some reason, Christmas is just you stocking up on supplies. You're like, what'd you get your wife this year? Like, oh, I got her diamond ring, a tennis bracelet. And they're like, what'd you get? You're like, I got underwear, socks, hair stickers. Oh, she got this really cool pair of jeans. I saw them like eight months ago at Target. And she was like, that'll make a great Christmas present. My mom fed me that line of bullshit the whole, whole childhood. You'd see something at Easter and she'd be like, oh, that'll make a good birthday present. I was like, my birthday's in March. It's already past. She'd be like, exactly. You'll have something to look forward to. I was like, it's a pack of baseball cards. I could buy them now if I wanted. I was just trying to spend your money. God. Anybody on Facebook in here? Facebook users, round of applause. Hey, you're, allowed, you're allowed to clap. Sometimes comedy is a two-way street. It's great when you are in here and there's like a delayed response on every joke from the comedians. It's like watching cable TV when they got the guys over in Iraq. And they're all like, Tom, how's it going over there? You're like, this guy's a dick. Hey, good, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Real good. We're live, aren't we? Shit. <laughs> What's the deal? It's 2010. Why are we still plugging the ear with the finger so we can hear? I, I'm pretty sure we've developed microphones and hearing aids that work properly. You don't have to jam it in there. I was like, I worked at Wendy's when I was in high school for three years. People, you come through there and you scream. Oh my God. Like, hey, can I take your order? I'll take one, number one! It's like I didn't even use the microphone, I just like lean out the way, I was like, 99 cents! Are you freaking kidding me? You guys still up charge for sauces? Like, yeah, 35 cents. They up, they hole. I had this guy come through one time uh, from, from New York. I'm not bashing New York. I, I'll bash New Jersey. I'm not bashing New York. <laughs> I'm only bashing New Jersey because I work with a guy from New Jersey and we bash him every day. We actually call him Jersey. Jersey. And he's got the biff. <laughs> it's great when you walk down like Center City, Philly, you can always tell who's from Jersey and who's from, Sil or from Philly. Because all like the Phillies guys got like their uh, hair spiked. Like moi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to be 21 again. I was like, check it out, babe. I don't have to exercise and lose my keg. I can just spike my hair. <laughs> She's like, no, you should still exercise. <laughs> lose the keg, you're fat. <laughs> Only in one section of your body, and that's kind of weird. <laughs> no, but uh, back, the, the guy at BMW from New York, right? Pulls up the window, he orders one sandwich. His, his total bill is like $3, right? He, it's, it's lightly raining, and uh, he rolls down the window and, and puts his finger out like this, and he has a $100 bill, like, crimped up long ways, and he hands it to him, he's like, sorry, it's the smallest bill I got. I was like, you have no idea who you're messing with. I pull pranks on everybody, so immediately I was like, uh, Scott, can I get a uh, $100 in fives? <laughs> My manager's like, why do you need $100 in fives? I was like, don't worry about it, seriously. I handed this guy back $95 in change and nothing but $5 bills. I was like, sorry, it's the biggest bill I got. <laughs> Think about coming through my Burnham carry out again, won't you? That guy's a dick. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like, he's up in New York telling that story to his buddies. And now I'm on stage telling it, making fun of him. Who won that battle? Seriously. <laughs> now, so I was asking, you got the Facebook users in here. You guys ever get the, the friend request from the person that you did not want to get it from? Yeah. Yes. And then you're like, Shh, deny, confirm, deny, confirm. I'll just let it blank. <laughs> I just won't accept for like three months, maybe they'll go away. But you always get like that one friend request from an ex-girlfriend from high school, and you click it, and you're like, oh, when did you get hot? <laughs> oh, I couldn't shave your mustache.
mustache off like 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, you got beach photos too. <laughs> But there is always that one ex-girlfriend who's just like, thank God I pulled out. <laughs> you guys, you're moaning and groaning, but I know every guy in here has been like, it's true. I dated this one girl that looked like a beast. The only thing I don't understand about Facebook, though, is you get to catch up on everybody else's life while you waste your own. <laughs> Anybody else see the irony in that there? Hmm? Yeah. Great invention that was. Hey, let me spend eight hours trying to catch up on what Tom and Harry were talking about. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> My wife is a Facebook stalker. <laughs> And I don't mean stalker where she kind of knows what you're all doing in your life. I'm talking stalker like will friend request people that she doesn't even know just to finish up the conversation that she saw on her friend's webpage and then come tell you about it. That's a Facebook stalker right there. She's trying to get some help. We are trying to help her. Right now. Please do not friend request her. She does not need any more friends. No, I was, I'm just joking about my wife. We do, we do have a great marriage. We do. And the the great thing about it is like when you find stuff out about the other person that you had no idea about. And I'm talking about the stuff that like they don't tell you about when you're talking to your married friends. And and they tell you like, oh, women have a lot of shit. No shit, Sherlock. I mean, you're dating. You know, a girl's got a lot of shit. Joel's right up front. I work with him and Megan. She has a lot of shit, doesn't she, Joel? Oh, yeah. And you knew that right from the beginning. You don't need to find that out. I'm talking about finding stuff out like this. This past year. You guys are like, oh God. <laughs> I do live up to my reputation. What will he say next? She walks by the bathroom door. I have it propped wide open. My foot's up on the toilet seat. <laughs> I got a bottle of baby powder. And all she did was like walk by and then was like, what? What are you doing? I was like, Powder in my balls. <laughs> don't, I don't, I don't want to chafe. <laughs> Those are the things that they don't tell you about getting married. <laughs> things about women are when you come home at 2 a.m. after you're playing cards with your buddies and all the lights are off and you're trying to be nice and not make any noise and turn any lights on and you walk through the living room carpet and guess who trimmed their toenails that night? And it's like a nail going into the foot so you're like, oh, what the hell is that? And it rides on your brain all night too and then the next morning you're like, what the shit was in the you like pick up your foot and you got a jagged fingernail coming out the back end. Like, do I have to get a tennis shot for this? <laughs> we'll change gears. Who likes impersonations? Yes. I don't do them. <laughs> no, that's just you. Yeah. I seriously don't do them. That's actually the best, easiest joke I've ever written. I said to him and I was like, who likes impersonation? I don't do them. That'll never work. <laughs> oh, it works, my friends. <laughs> my wife and I, we got married down in uh, Key West, and then we had our honeymoon down there. We stayed around a little bit longer after the family left, and uh, we did one of those uh, boat excursions where you can go out and you have like an all-day thing. You can do uh, jet skiing, uh, the snorkeling, and, and we did the kayak. And I'm so into kayaking. FYI, she won't let me buy a kayak. Because I won't use it. I'm like, well, duh, I can't use it if I don't have one. I am in sales. I understand the pitch that you've got going here, but you're failing at the objective. So we go on the kayak, and it's a tandem kayak. Uh, 
Try again, again, that's two people. <laughs> so we go out on the kayak, and they give you directions, like two places you can go. You can go out and see this, uh, uh, what is it, like one of those uh, light towers. And uh, the lighthouse, lighthouse, thank you. I'm, wow. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am a great storyteller. <laughs> you should come eat dinner with me sometime. <laughs> Uh, the lighthouse, and then the other one is, uh, they have, <laughs> like, a sunken sailboat. Uh, they call it a sunken boat with treasure. <laughs> Build that one up a little bit, why don't you? So we go out and we see the lighthouse. It's not a lighthouse. Oh, did you hear that? Ooh! <clears throat> Talking embarrassing. <laughs> you always get those, like, the worst times, too. You get one, like, when your manager's meeting. Like, how do you think you did this month? You're like, good! <clears throat> good! Real good! Numbers are up? Yeah! You want to go have for happy after this? Drink a lager? Yeah. You probably want to lift weights. She's like, Ryan, I don't want to lift weights. She's like, yeah. It's... <coughs> Cause you're a girl. And he really does that. <laughs> it is true. I do have a squeakiness. It's never left me. Plus my receding hairline, if you can. <laughs> Hence the mohawk. <laughs> so we go out. We see the lighthouse. It's not a lighthouse. It's a freaking buoy with a pigeon on top taking a shit. freaking sucking sailboat. I'm like, let's go! And in the back, all I feel is a freaking break. I'm like, what are you doing back there? Let's go, paddle, paddle. The ocean scares me. I was like, we're freaking five feet deep water here. I can step out. Hi, I'm still the same height as you. What are you scared of? The ocean scares me. Are you freaking kidding me right now? We're gonna reach out and touch the boat still. We are not that far away. I tried. I really did. I paddled again, break in the back. I was like, we just got married. I'm the man of the house. I'm putting down my foot. We're going out to Sama! So uh, we turned around. And we went back to the boat. I did not win that battle. Oh, man. Anybody celebrating anything here tonight? Birthdays, anniversaries, anything out here? Birthday. Birthday. What do you got going on there? Birthday in the back? Oh, it's Erica. Oh, hey, a big round of applause, Erica Pennypacker. She's down here all the way from Mifflin County tonight with all with my old crew. Mifflin County. Woo! The old county Pennsylvania is worse than Pear County. Except for Juanita County. Better known as Juniata. That borders actually, I, I, I can't even say Mifflin County's that bad. It does border the worst county in the world, Snyder County. <laughs> they practically have sex with fish in Snyder County. <laughs> How do you think trout season comes around every year? <laughs> no, Mifflin County's bad. <laughs> oh my god. Did you guys know that Lewistown, seriously, is, is... Do you know where Lewistown's at? If a round of applause, Lewistown, you know what it is. All right. I'm just going to take a quick little uh, uh, question there here. Do you know anything about Lewistown or what it would be about? Just name it out if you know it. Heroin. Heroin. Shit hole. Thank you, heroin. And shithole, both at the same time. Yes. You're not offending me. We said it every day that I lived there. I was like, who wants to go to Lewistown? Not I. Not I, my friends. Correct English, they don't speak that there. It is a shithole, and it is well known for heroin. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Lewistown, Pennsylvania was actually uh, the focal point of an MSNBC coverage story way back in the 90s as the biggest little town on the East Coast for heroin use. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What up now? That's freaking awesome to be known by. Go to college, like, where are you from? Harrisburg? Like, where are you from? Lewistown? Oh, heroin capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Got the track marks to prove it. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Heroin kills any New Year's resolution that you got. That shit goes right out the window when you're doing that stuff. Okay, never do that joke again. 
<laughs> FYI, write that one down. <laughs> Harrisburg, I do have to ask you, I did not grow up around here. I moved down here like seven years ago. What is going on with the whole East Shore versus West Shore vendetta? <laughs> Teeter-totter, teeter-totter. Some guy in like 1960 came up where he's like, the East Shore is where the black people live. And the West Shore is where the white people live. And you guys have helped to it! <laughs> 40 years later, you've helped to it! How? How do you hold to that? <laughs> Talk about losing an entire set of friends. You tell them you're moving to the East Shore, my friend. <laughs> See you when you move back. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. My wife and I lived on the West Shore. We had an apartment over there. It was real nice. We moved over to the East Shore because we could finally afford a house over there. And people were all like, Oh, oh, you live on the East Shore? Okay. <laughs> from like Steelton or something. Oh, yeah. What is Steelton? What is up with the freaking Steelton rollers? Yeah. You have construction equipment as your mascot? <laughs> Kidding me. Only in Harrisburg would you have construction equipment as a mascot. Indian Valley Warriors! Steelton Rollers! like pave the road every time you guys score a touchdown or something? <laughs> every field goal we repair a bridge tonight! <laughs> and you guys, seriously, you hold to that whole East Shore versus West Shore. You try to cross over that 83 bridge, wow! That's like a drawbridge going into a heaven, a gated heaven community. Oh my god, it's like, oh, where are you coming from, fucker? <laughs> Pextonia? <laughs> Back, you piece of shit. <laughs> Get on your side of the shore. The New Cumberland, you're so special because you technically don't have a shore. And you're all like, you know what? Let's name our school district the West Shore School District. <laughs> Freaking right. Take that away from Camp Hill. Camp Hill, how cool are you? We need a school district out for ourselves. We paid a lot of money for that. Good job. Pay all the taxes you want. Because <laughs> I live in lower packs than we do yeah. not pay shit. <laughs> we might not have shit, but we don't pay for shit. <laughs> when are you guys thinking about putting that bridge back? Never? Okay, all right. As long as you don't raise my property taxes, I'm fine with that. I get a 4 by 4 truck, I don't care. I'll jack it up. Put spinners on there. Rent and roll. <laughs> Greatest business idea ever. <laughs> you don't want to get to Walmart and get some spinners? You can rent these sons of bitches. <laughs> And you know the manager at Renna Center and Aaron's was like, damn it! Oh, the only thing we didn't think of! I seriously had no idea anybody would jet up out of their seat and rent some rims. Good marketing ploy, my friends. Oh man, Harrisburg, you are crazy. I've been making fun of it all night long, but you do hate Perry County. <laughs> Listen to that. I didn't even tell a joke. And people just laugh. You just say Perry County, and people are like, dumb people. <laughs> no, we get the joke. <laughs> you said Perry County. <laughs> I just don't understand why you guys hate Perry County. Seriously, I have nothing against it. My wife and I got married there a couple years ago. Yeah, my first wife, my sister, we got married there a couple years ago. Emily 
Kelly rebounded me with that joke. She's like, you did? When I go to a comedy show, I pay attention, and I believe 20 minutes ago, you said you got married in Key West. I take copious notes. <laughs> Suck that English teacher. You're like copious. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> That's actually way better than the joke that I was gonna do. If you didn't hear it, I said copious, and she's like, what is that? I don't even know what it is. Um, we'll give you the abridged version later. Uh, sorry, we'll give you the shortened version later. Sorry. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep doing it. <laughs> oh, man. So I tell you what. Here's the only thing I'm still having trouble with with uh, with marriage is cuddling. Ooh. <laughs> you guys wanted to know why we had this show on a Thursday night. The Phillies aren't on. <laughs> it's the only reason why we seriously did it on Thursday night. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't. What is what is cuddling with you girls? Seriously, what do you get out of it? <laughs> it brings us together. Now it brings your ass closer to my ass on the bed. And I got no room now. That's what it does. It does nothing for a guy. The only thing it does is piss us off because you're laying on the remote. And we're stuck watching women's entertainment TV. Like, I'm, re I'm really sorry, but I, I, like 20 minutes, I can't take that. <laughs> Please, get your ass out the remote. My wife has helped me though. There was this girl I used to have <laughs> relations with all the time. And uh, afterwards I'd get up and leave right away and she'd always beg, Ryan, if you want this marriage to work, <laughs> you're gonna have to stick around. No, that wasn't my sister that time. <laughs> um, you guys like Valentine's Day? No. 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 Why not? Oh, you do? Great. Now we got my mom-in-law in bed. <laughs> the only time she was able to fit in a reaction to the show. Valentine's Day, I love that. Oh, good. Valentine's Day, you know, that's pretty cool. I, I had a pretty cool invention. You got the rent and roll, you know, that guy's got it. For Valentine's Day, I want to make green cards for swingers. <laughs> How easy is that, right? From both of us. You got something real freaky going on from all of us? That'd be awesome. Or you could do uh, like trading cards of, of all your favorite porn stars. Cause that way you can collect all your favorite STDs. That'd be a good one. The girl would love it. Love it. I came up with a couple new jokes. You guys want to hear them? Yeah. yeah. Alright. I'm going to end the show with all this new stuff. I was uh, writing some Jesus jokes the other night. Way to ride that roller coaster into the ground. Comedy. Take a high, then you go for the low. And then if it's not good, you rebound with a high again. There you go. Alright, so Jesus was carpenter, right? What happens if he sucked as a carpenter? And you had to return some stuff? <laughs> hey, how embarrassing. I'm like, hey, Zeus. <laughs> Your stuff sucks. <laughs> but what would the warranty... I'd be like, a limited lifetime warranty. Oh, that was good. Oh, that's bad. The one I thought was if him and his dad actually did have a furniture shop <laughs> and it sucked so bad they were going out of business. <laughs> and they had like a going out of business sale. Could you imagine what the commercials would be like on the radio? Because think of how bad they are right now and how corny they are. This one back, Sunday, 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 Joseph and Sons Furniture going out of business sale. Arts, crosses, and covenants all 50% off. Stop in with your manufacturer's coupon, and if we can't beat it, you can tell us to go to hell. Hey, I'm Ryan Cole. That's my time.